The meaning of the lyrics is basically, simply put, love me and I will love you in return. A lot of times, women don't understand men and men don't understand women. So I was kind of giving love from a woman's perspective and saying to a man that basically you can have it all, you know, you can have the best woman in the world, but you have to treat the woman right as well. The lyrics from the beginning of the song, you wouldn't exactly expect it to go into, okay, negotiation. It would have sounded more like, okay, I'm going to love you, love you, and give you all of me, but then the chorus turns into negotiation. So I started writing it in the car, and when I got to the studio, we worked around it, and I kind of finished the lyrics in the, in the studio, but I had the first verse and the chorus, and then just did the second verse. I remember driving down Orange Street going to work, and I heard Love Me playing on the radio. And immediately, you know, I, I called Melanie. I said, Melanie, I'm hearing that song you did on the radio. It sounds really professional. During the concert for Haiti, I had just come to, to shoot all the performing artists that were there. And I was shooting away all night, doing really well. And then this woman got up on stage and started singing. And she just blew me away. And right then and there, I thought, I need to find out who this woman was, and it was Melanie. We always talked about doing a music video. Unfortunately, things never really materialized. You know, we tried so much, we failed. It's one thing to have a wonderful concept in your head and it's another thing to know to have the proper equipment and the right lighting and the right so many different aspects that makes a video come together. We needed to find a group of people who with the little free time they had left in their life to dedicate that to a little side project like this. Jamai and Gilvano had already been on board, Rigo had already been on board and then we just needed you know the director to hit the nail on the head. I remember on Facebook she posted a photo and I thought that photo doesn't do her any justice at all. And people were saying, oh, how beautiful, how nice. I was thinking, no, no. So I jokingly posted, um, man, I would love to really take some photos of you. The both of us realized that we were very serious about what we do and it, it happened. We initially did um, a photo shoot for my album cover. And that went really well. And we started talking about video. And um, I can remember telling her, yeah, I'd be really interested in doing video, but I don't know video very well. And I didn't think that I could handle the whole production. But if she knew anybody else that could help out. And that's where uh, Jemai and, and Gilvano's name came up. I think Mel called me, then Tony called me. And I've always had a certain attraction for Tony the way he touches that camera. I got really excited because I, I always have been seeing um, Tony Rod's work for a long time. And I was always looking for a chance to somehow do some sort of collaboration with him. As much as Mel is beautiful, I think it was Tony's attraction. I just wanted to feel and see what he sees when he closes his eyes. I sat down and started pulling still images together to kind of get a feeling for what the song uh, was about. He took that video and created a video before we started and he had it done for the second. Which um, allowed us to give structure to the to the music video so that it it's just not a whole bunch of images thrown in there. And it was just basically to create what Tony had already envisioned which on this little iPad or whatever they call it, just flipping it through and we're matching the smile with it. I wanted the right lighting in Rigo's eyes. I wanted the color of Mel's skin to be the same gold that he saw it as. And so um, it was a, there was a little background, but many times as you realize in art that you could have the greatest ideas, but when you get to that location, it's going to tell you what to do. I was familiar with the Great House and they were very gracious to let us use one of their finer rooms. Um, and the Great House had the perfect look that we wanted. 
So the, the Great House shoot was the very first shoot and wasn't exactly an easy shoot for me, but like I said, the, the, everything surrounding it was great. She did everything we asked her to, even some very difficult scenes where she had to get intimate. On-screen interaction is not exactly easy, being that it's the first time for me. You could tell she felt uncomfortable, but she did it. She, she um, got into character and, and, and came through. Acting was the first thing that I learned to know that it's not an easy thing. I'm a singer, and I didn't exactly consider myself an actress, but now, after having done this, I, I can say and believe that I'm an actor. I don't even know how high, but driving around that hill, I said, wow, where is Tony taking us now? <laughs> and Maya King um, allowed us to go to this remote waterfall, which is guarded by gates and guards and all. They gave us the keys and allowed us to go back there on our own. But when we got there, everything was fine and uh, it worked out perfectly. The city was okay, but, but it was so tame, no? It was so clinical, so clean, the sheets, the right lighting. While out there, we had to wait an hour for a cloud. You had two seconds to capture the cloud. And that was beautiful because you're, it's man against God. I can't forget that the water was absolutely freezing cold, but it was beautiful and it was definitely worth it. This just shows how wonderful Belize is, that we could do it all from, from Dangriga. We stayed overnight in Dangriga and we were able to do the waterfall, we were able to do the Pine Ridge, we were able to do the beach scenes, everything from one location. picnic scene was a nice shoot because it was more relaxing, less less intense, you know, so we could have been more laid back and just relax a little on the picnic shoot. Manasse Beach was beautiful. The sand was beautiful, the water was beautiful. So I'd have to say in Dangriga, the scene stepped up a notch, I mean, with the nature, and, and I love that sort of stuff. So the backpacking, everything, it was so, that part was fun. 